Wales, the land of song, dreams and druids, a country rich in tradition and spectacular scenery. The Vale of Festiniog, part of Snowdonia National Park, with its panorama of mountains, lakes, rivers, wide estuaries and sandy beaches. This little train will bring back memories to many of us as it sets out on a journey that people come for miles to enjoy. Leaving Porth Madog, it's now crossing the Cobb. And how's that for a backdrop? On its 13 and a half mile journey up the Vale to Bliner Festiniog. This is the way to be an engine driver. What a journey, what scenery, what history. Oh, this is the famous Festiniog Railway. The mile-long embankment, known as the Cobb, was built in 1807 by William Maddox to divert the Glaslyn River. It took him four years. In 1836, the Festiniog Railway was built to a gauge of just under two feet to transport the true blue Welsh slate from the mines in the mountains at Bliner Festiniog down to the harbour at Porth Madog. The full trucks of slate ran all the way down to the harbour by gravity, with a horse riding on a special wagon on the rear to return the empties up again. Here, the slate was loaded onto sailing ships to put a roof over the heads of millions on the great continent of Europe, as well as Asia and America. This went on for nearly 30 years. Then the first steam engines were introduced and passenger service started. The railway continued to prosper as tourists were then discovering the wonders of Snowdonia for their holidays. That's called a double fairly locomotive, by the way, setting off from Porth Madoc Harbour in 1936. Here's Bessie Jones, the station mistress at Tannebuch for many years, exchanging the single line token. The trains puffed through marvellous country to Blinefestinjog, where passengers could change at the old LMS station for the Conway Valley line to the North Wales coast. But traffic declined, and when the war came, no more passengers were carried at all. It seemed like the end of an era when the line closed altogether in 1946. But the fire still smouldered, and in 1954, a band of enthusiasts, optimists some people called them, sweated to cut away years of derelict growth and gradually got the railway going again. Using Prince, the older steam loco, now with a new boiler, and restored coaches, the line was reopened section by section as progress continued. From the train today, the ever-changing vista presents mile after mile of sheer delight. There's also a full steward service of light refreshments, so no one goes hungry or thirsty. And there's draft beer too. Passengers enjoy a comfortable ride in a variety of coaches of varying ages, but all efficiently maintained to the highest standards. And that goes for everything on this railway. The Vale of Festiniog is an area of outstanding natural beauty. Trees, valleys, lakes, they're all here to beguile the eye of the traveller. And as you go higher and higher, naturally the views expand apart from the tunnels, of course. But there it is, the beauty of North Wales for the enjoyment of the Festiniog passenger. Here at Ddiallt, 
trains traverse Britain's only spiral railway, built by dedicated volunteers known as the Deviationists. The line here is higher up the mountainside than the original track, the course of which can still be seen. The deviation story is a saga of determination and toil. In the late 1950s, part of the old track and a tunnel was flooded to build a dam to form a lake for the new pump storage electricity generating station, Atana Grisio. Our group of enthusiasts had fought this plan as hard as they could, but with little avail. It went through. But there was no way that our determined bunch would have their goal to get tracks to Blyneye once again thwarted, especially by a small thing like a power station. So they got a bit devious. They built embankments, cuttings, and even a new tunnel through the mountain. They burrowed like moles. At times it seemed impossible, but they never lost heart or volunteers. For 13 years, this dedicated and tenacious group bent their backs every weekend and holiday time to make their dream come true. They then laid two and a half miles of new track high on the hillside and above the power station lake. When all was completed, trains could then operate as far as a temporary halt by the lakeside, and very popular it was. By then, Excavating the site for a new station at Tan Nagrisio created no major problems, as assistance was given by various contractors. At last, everybody could say goodbye to the excavators, dumper trucks, the mud and machinery. It had all been worthwhile. As the last lorry disappeared from the site, the great day was just around the corner. June 1978, when the first official train ran through from Porth Madog to the new station at Tan Nagrisio. Even the rain couldn't dampen their spirits. It gave the railway a new sense of purpose because now passengers could go all the way from Porth Madog to the outskirts of Blyna Festiniog with a regular bus link connecting to the town centre or the British Rail Station for the Conway Valley Line. out of the tunnel and along the lakeside. That's the power station, very popular with visitors, just like the railway. This is Tana Grisia, with some wonderful walks around the hills. Close by is the Electricity Board's Tourist and Information Centre, where interesting visits can be planned. 